In our previous videos, we were looking at linear programming and integer programming. So let's look one last time at linear programming, but this time let's look at integer programming where we have binary, where it can only be in one classification or the other. So there's only two options there. So we can find this uh, workbook here um, at drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. And you can find it here under linear programming because we're doing prescriptive analytics. What should the organization do? And so linear programming helps us make decisions. And in this particular video, the decision we're going to make is who should be working what shift. So we're looking at a scheduling decision because the binary decision is work, not work. All right, so we go into linear programming here and uh, don't forget, you'll need to open in Collab, save a copy, log into your Google Drive so that you can amend it. And we're looking at the very last section because our previous videos did the linear programming and the integer programming. So let's go in. We're going to need to, if you haven't from the previous videos, you're going to need to install that pulp. Uh, that allows us to do our linear programming. We're going to need pandas as pd, numpy as np, and in our previous videos we did some graphing, so we imported matplotlib.pyplot as plt. In this particular scenario, we're not going to have any graphs. The other thing is, is once we've installed that uh, package, we need to import it, so from pulp. And here you see a star because we're going to import all the different commands that are in that package. So that's what the star indicates, that it imports all the pieces, not just one that we're specifying. So we've done that install. All right, so let's go down towards the bottom here after our integer programming. See the graphing that we did. What we're going to do is a scenario where we are binary, where you're working or not working. So let's just consider the following scenario. We're trying to schedule who's going to work when. And let's suppose that there are two shifts per day, a morning shift and an evening shift. An employee can either work in the morning, evening, or have the day off. So we're gonna go through these different constraints as we design our linear programming piece. And so for each of these, what we're gonna see is we're gonna create loops to make sure those constraints are set. So let's just get started here, and we're going to start with the assumptions that there are 35 days that we're going to be creating a schedule for, and you can play with this after we get all of it set into motion. Uh, you can play with the number of days and the number of employees and rerun it. See, sometimes there's not a solution. So we'll want to make sure we, so we put that at the top so that we can rerun this section by setting those assumptions. So anytime we're doing our linear programming in pulp, we need to define the model. So our model is going to be an LP problem. We need to give it a name. In this case, the name we're going to just give it is shift because we're deciding who's going to work what shift. And we need to specify whether it's a maximization problem or a minimization problem. And so we're going to set it as a maximization problem. All right, now let's look at what we have here. We're going to set some variables, and the challenge we have here is that we have these variables that are going to have many different values. So we're going to set that we're going to have the morning shift, okay? And this is going to have, there's going to be a number of people who are working the morning shift. So we'll have a range of employees, and we'll have a range of days in which people are working the morning shift. But these particular variables we're going to be solving for, which is our people working the morning shift, it's all zero or one. You're either working the morning shift or you're not. So variable M, and there will be a bunch of them because it'll be all the combinations of days and employees, will either be zero or one, and it's going to be binary. It's got to be zero or it's got to be one. So minimum zero, maximum one, and then the only choices are zero or one. Same thing with if a person is working the evening shift, so variable E is the evening. There's going to be a lot of these variables because we're going to have every one of them for every combination of day and employee. The minimum is zero, the maximum is one, and it's binary. You're either working evening or you're not. Then we have the third variable, which is V for vacation. And so this LP variable, we're going to call it vacation. There's going to be a lot of them because it's every combination of day and employee. 
and the minimum is zero, the maximum is one, and it's binary, you're either on vacation or you're not. So just like with our previous models, if I scroll up a bit, you'll recall in the previous ones, we defined, you know, here was an X variable, Y variable, Z variable. They were integer in this case, there was no maximum upper limit. We named them, the lower bounds were zero. The difference here is that there was only one X, one Y, and one Z in our solution. So you remember when it solved it for us, it gave us the three numbers of how much we should produce of each product. In this case, we're gonna be scheduling. So that means that we're going to have all the days for 35 days and 15 employees. So we're actually gonna have 35 times 15 for the number of Ms and 35 times 15 for the number of E's and same thing with V. So we're gonna get a lot of, of information it's solving for. So we're gonna create quite a complex um, model here. So we've created the model. We have said, here's what the variables are that we're gonna to have to be solving for, all these M's, E's, and B's, but they're all gonna be binary. So you're either going to be a zero or a one. And now let's start our loops, okay? So these loops are gonna be setting out these expectations here. And our first one is that there are two shifts per day, the morning shift and the evening shift. And an employee can either work morning, evening, or have the day off. So what we have here is we start, we'll just start with our object equals none. This is just an empty item here. And this allows us to accumulate. Okay, so let's create a loop. For I in range, so we're gonna go through all the days. And then within each day, we're gonna go for J in the employees. So for each day, for each day, we're going to look at employee one and we're going to say, okay, are they working the morning? Are they working the evening? And they're going to add these together. And we're going to do that as we loop through all of the different combinations of employees and days. Add together, remember variable M for person J on day I is either gonna be a zero or a one. And variable E for person J on day I is either gonna be a zero or one. So we're gonna add these together. So we're gonna create this loop here. Now, when we create this loop as part of the model, so here we have, we're going to need to make some limits on that. Okay, so we're going to, here's this calculation that it's going to do as part of the model. It's gonna to add together the morning and evening for each person and each day. Now, for J in the range of employees, so for each employee on a particular day, so on that I, what's gonna happen is, is that they, if we add up, they're working morning, they're working evening, or they're on vacation, those three things added together have to be equal to one because you can't be working morning and evening. You can't be working morning and be on vacation. You can't be evening and vacation. So the constraint here in this loop is that when we add up morning, evening, and vacation for person J on any particular day called I, that is going to have to equal one, okay? All right. Now, I'm not sure I clicked all those in order, so let's do this again. Here we go, load that in, load this in. Okay, now let's look at some other scenarios here. The minimum number of workers per shift per day must be met. In this example, it was five for the morning and seven for the evening. Okay, so minimum number of workers per shift must be five in the morning and seven in the evening. So here is the minimum number of employees for the morning. Morning, let's do that. Oh, five and seven, I'll change that. Let's start with three and five. <laughs> um, let's make it three and five. So the minimum number of employees in the morning is three. The minimum number of employees in the evening is five. You can actually, let's set this out. I'll just make this a separate one here. So as you're playing with this, once we have it built, 
uh, you can try changing those minimums and see if you can still get a workable solution. Of course, if you have too many constraints, right, it's quite possible you have one that's not solvable. But for right now, let's start with minimum three in the morning, minimum five in the evening. All right. For I in range from zero up to those days, and remember our days here is 35, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to start out with just two placeholders called C and D. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the employees. So for employee J, we're going to look at on day I, are they working in the morning? So that's going to be C. Are they for employee J, are they working in the evening? That's going to be D. And what we're gonna do is we are going to go through all the employees, and so we're adding up how many people are working morning. That's the C is accumulating, right? So we start with it empty, and we keep accumulating as we add up everybody who's working morning. That gives us C. And then for D, we keep adding up everyone who is working evening. So we go through with J, employee J, are you working evening on this particular day? And then we just keep adding to it. So that's those plus equals that we've seen before. Now, that's going to give us a total of C for the morning for a particular day, and then D, the total who are working the evening for a particular day, okay? And so we'll do that for every day in the range of zero to the number of days. And what we're checking here is that C, the number of people working the morning, must be more than the minimum of three. And the number D, those who are working the evening, must be more than the, than the minimum of five, okay? So that's what this loop is. This loop is adding up how many are working the morning shift, how many are working the evening shift, and for each day it must be more than our minimum morning of three and our minimum evening of five, okay? All right, so we're doing three and five, not five and seven. I changed it somewhere. All right, so next constraint. A worker will not change from morning to evening shifts in consecutive days. Changing from morning to evening only happens following a day off. So you can't work in evening and then the next day work the morning. If you're working evenings, you keep working evenings until you take a vacation day. If you're working morning one day, you don't work evening the next. You keep working mornings until you get a vacation day. All right, so let's take a look at our next loop here. Now this one is going to be tied, there's a couple loops here and they're going to be tied together. So we can't change shifts. We also cannot work more than five consecutive days. So you work five days and then you get two days off. Okay. You can't be scheduled one day on, then one day off, then one day on again. So you do five days, two days off, and only at those two days off do you then switch between morning and evening. So let's look at how we would do that in terms of our loops, okay? All right. So we did this one, now let's look at this one here. Okay, so here we have a loop. We're gonna start with C just being an empty placeholder. And we're going to go through the days and the range. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, okay, morning. On a particular day, we have here an employee, employee J, and we are adding up their morning, plus we're adding up their evening the day after. Okay, so we have I and we have I plus one. So this is the next day. So if you work the morning shift on day I, and you work the evening shift on the next day, I plus one, then your C would be equal to two. And we can't have that. The C has to be less than or equal to one. So you cannot work morning one day and evening the next. That's what this is. And it's checking this for every two consecutive days. So we're going to days minus one because we don't know you know, the next one after that. So you can't stop on the 35th day and then do 35 plus one because we only have up to the 35 days. So we got to stop before that. That's why the range does days minus one. And we're going to check that for every employee. So for J and range employees, we're going to check for every combination of two consecutive days to make sure that they don't do a morning and an evening plus one. 
So the constraint here is that C, when we add those two together, must be less than or equal to one, because if they are working a morning or the next day they're working an evening, that's okay, they just can't do both. So we'll load that in, okay? All right, so now let's look at the week. So here we have, and remember, here's where we're looking at our, that percentage sign. So think back to the Python code we had talked about before. We're doing loops here. Um, we're doing less than equal signs. We're doing our plus equals. We're using all of those from our Python coding video. Well, here's another one. How about the percentage sign? Remember the percentage sign is for when you do division, is there a remainder, right? Is there leftover when you divide? So here we're gonna take I plus one and we're going to divide by seven. And then we're looking at if you divide by seven, is it have numbers left over? So if you divide by seven and you don't get no remainder, so you do get a remainder, um, we wanna look at the scenario here where it's not equal to zero, where there's some numbers left over. So you take nine plus one is 10, 10 divided by seven. Well, 10 goes into seven one time, so there's three left over. So that is not equal to zero. So in that case, if we're on day 10, or what we, day nine, if we're on day nine and nine plus two, so that's 11, when you divide it by seven, it's also not equal to zero, then this loop occurs. Well, that would be like day nine. Day nine, nine plus one is 10, 10 divided by seven has numbers left over, it's not equal to zero. And nine plus two is 11, 11 divided by seven has numbers left over, it is not equal to zero. So in that case, we're not a number that's divisible by seven. And if we add two more days, those two more days aren't also delivered by seven, then we create this empty spot C, and we look at, are you working evenings? Are you working the next morning? So here we have, this is employee J, and they are working on day I in the evening. Are they also working the morning of the next day? So remember, you can't work the evening shift and then the next day work the morning shift unless you have your vacation. So the reason that it's there's this division here is to check for whether or not you took vacation, okay? so. What we're doing here is we're saying you can't do evening and then morning the next day, unless there is a break between, okay? Because remember, you're only gonna work maximum consecutive days five, and that's the next piece that comes in. So these three kind of are combined together to give us those last constraints. So we can't work morning and then evening the next day, we can't work evening and then morning the next day, um, and we have to do our maximum consecutive days. The reason we have to have this extra step in here is because it is okay to work a evening and then the next time you work be morning as long as you took a vacation in between. Okay, so let's run that. All right, so then we're gonna set the max consecutive days. I'm actually just gonna pull this separate here. And any of these where we're defining the assumptions, we could have put at the very beginning because then you could change them and see what happens rather than have it layered in the middle here. Uh, we could have put it all at the top, the max consecutive days, the minimum employees on morning and evening. We really should have put all of that up here with the days and employees. That's all the assumptions that we've built into the system. Because we wanna play with those, change those and see if we can still build a schedule. Okay, so here we have are days off. So maximum consecutive days you can work in a row are five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a range from zero to the number of days minus six. So we're looking at it in, in week long increments, zero to six is seven days. And what we're going to do is we're going to, for a range of seven, we're going to look at your morning and your evening, okay? And what we're going to look at here is that you are under the maximum consecutive days. So in this case, what we're doing is we're adding your mornings and your evenings together. Now, this is not actually going to be occurring in 
where you're one, you're one and one, because you can't work morning and evening in the same day, that's already addressed up here. Okay, so we have this loop to make sure you're not morning and evening at the same time. What this one allows for is that as we go through the days in a week, this will be one and that'll be zero for one day, and then this will be one and that'll be zero for the next day. So as we go and loop through the seven days here, we want to add together all your morning shifts and your evening shifts. When we add all those together across seven days, the maximum consecutive days you can have is five, which means the total here needs to be less than or equal to five. So you could take off more vacation days, right? Not just two, but you could take off five vacation days and just work two in the week. It allows for that. It just doesn't allow for you to work six days in the week. Okay, so we're gonna loop through all the employees. We're going to loop through all the combinations of seven days. And within that, we're gonna look at each seven day period of time to make sure that when we add together all your morning and your evening shifts, you add that together, it's less than five days within a seven day period of time. So let's run that. All right, so then we have here our last constraint. And our last constraint here is related to having that vacation time. So we know you can't work more than five days a week, but we wanna make sure you get your two consecutive vacation days. So how do you make sure you get two consecutive vacation days? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through a range from zero to days minus two. So we can't go all the way from zero days to 35 days because our calculation here looks at the day and the following two days. And if you went all the way up to 35 days, well then you need data on day 36 and day 37. So we're gonna stop it before we get there. So 35 minus the two. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with just an empty spot. And then we're going to look at, were you on vacation today? Were you on vacation tomorrow? Were you on vacation the day after? So let's say that you never take vacation. So today the answer is zero. Tomorrow the answer is zero. Zero minus zero. And the day after that is zero. Zero, zero. So zero minus zero plus zero, we get zero. Now, it's quite possible that those are three consecutive work days within your five, and so your total is zero. That's okay. So C here can be equal to zero. Now, what if instead of taking all these, working all three of these days, what if we took vacation today, we worked tomorrow, and then we worked or we took vacation the next day? All right. So we took vacation, so one. We worked, so zero. One minus zero is one. And then we took vacation. So we get one minus zero, and then we add that, we get two. That's okay, right? You can take a vacation day and then work and then take a vacation day, because you can take extra vacation days. So in this case here, this number would be one minus zero plus one, we get two. C can be greater than zero. But what if you work, so this is zero, so you're not working this day. Um, sorry, what if you're, so we gotta, you can't have work, vacation, work. Okay, so what if you work this day, so this number is zero, you're not on vacation, and then you're on vacation. So we have zero minus one, and then you are, so work, vacation, work. So this is zero, this is one, this is zero. Work, vacation, work. If that's the case, we have zero minus one, which is negative one. And then we add work, vacation, work, and then we add zero. So we get a negative one if it is work, vacation, work. And we can't have that, right? You get your two consecutive days in a row. So notice that the constraint here is that when we put this, this formula together, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Either you work all three days, okay, fine. The answer here is zero. You take two vacation days and a work day, okay. The answer is, depending on when those are, is either zero or two. But if you work vacation work, then the problem is this answer is a negative number, and so it's outside the constraint. 
So this particular formula creates the fact that you can't have work, vacation, work. You get uh, two consecutive vacation days. All right. Now, let's do our programming. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty list called schedule and uh, time underscore worker is another empty list. We're going to populate these. And then just like we did with our previous way more simple linear programming models, we're going to do model.solve. That's because we named it model. And then for v in model.variables, colon, we're going to have it append the name and put that for time underscore worker. And for the variable value, we're going to put it for schedule and we're going to append that to the empty list. So we're going to populate the empty list when it does the solving by taking all those different variable names. And we want to know the value, which is are they working morning, evening, or on vacation? Okay, so this we've created this empty, no longer empty list schedule and this time underscore worker, which is also no longer empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to take time underscore worker and the schedule and we're going to turn it into a table so it's easier to read. We'll use list zip and we talked about this one in other videos. We're going to then take our two lists, time underscore worker and sched and list zip puts them so that the first one becomes the first column and the second one becomes the second column. And then we name our columns time underscore worker and sched. Okay. So then we can do sched underscore complete. It's actually quite a long list, remember, because we have 15 workers, 35 days, 15 times 35. That's how many variables the sucker just solved for. Okay, so we got a big giant table. Now what and how do we use it? Well, what we want to do is we want to separate this out into something that's actually usable. So what we want to do is take this column, which comes from linear programming, and separate it out. So we want to create a column that shows us evening. We want a column that shows us um, the day, and we want one that shows us the shift. So what we're going to do here is, sorry, this is the shift. That tells us the, the employee number, right? So we have employee number, and we have day, uh, and we have the shift here is written as evening. So how do we do that? The way that we do that is we use um, a method where we split this here. So see how these are evening underscore number underscore number. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sched complete and the column called time worker, and we are going to split the string. So this is text. We're going to split it. And you have to tell it how you're going to split it. So we're going to split anytime there's this underscore we are going to split. Okay, that's what this first command says. And then what we need to do is we need to create new columns, one called shift, one called day, one called worker, where we're going to put this split data. And this is where we're gonna use that Lambda function we had talked about uh, in our Python coding video. And so remember Lambda says here we have a formula and X is the variable. And that allows you then to put different things in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it split the data. And what this is going to do is it's going to apply to the split data. It is going to pull the first set of information. So you see here it's going to pull the evening and morning and vacation labels. Okay, so X zero is going to be that first position. Then what we're going to do is we're going to split the data. We're going to apply this function to it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take everything that's in that second position. That's going to be the day. And then we're going to take our split underscore data and we're going to take everything that's in the third position and we're going to put it into the column called worker. So let's run that. And now let's look at, let's look at our whole full database. We have schedule. We have shift, we have day, it should go from 0 to 35, and we have workers, and those should go from 0 to 15. So what we can do is we can sort this, and it will tell us on a particular day and a particular morning shift who's working. 
Okay. We can also check a particular worker and see what days they work, the morning shift, the evening shift, and what days they have on vacation. So let's figure out who's working on day 10. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our SCED complete, that's this table here, and we can pull from the SCED complete certain, we can filter it. So what we're going to do is here, SCED underscore complete dot location. So find the locations where SCED underscore complete day is equal to 10. So who's working on day 10? Okay. And we could also see, okay, who is scheduled to work that day. So we're going to find the ones because remember, you're either scheduled to work or you're not. Okay. We can also then look at shift and we want not on vacation. So because remember the scheduled one is going to say, here's everyone who's evening shift for that day. Here's everyone who's morning shift for that day. Here's everyone who's vacation for that day. So we do want SCED equals one, but we want SCED equals one and we want the shift to not be vacation. So they're either working the morning shift or they're working the evening shift. So SCED complete schedule equals one and then the shift is not vacation. That's remember that exclamation equals. And then we're gonna sort the values so that we sort first by shift and then by worker. So let's take a look. All right, so here we have day 10, right? That's what we were looking for. And here we have the workers who are working the evening shift, worker one, 14, three, six, and eight. And here's the workers who are working the morning shift, zero, 10, five, and seven. So we can then see who is scheduled to work morning and evening on day 10. So take a moment and see if you can find a different day. How many people, let's say, how many people are on vacation on day 15? How would we do that? How many people are on vacation on day 15? So again, location, sched complete day, we want day 15. Okay, and we want people who are scheduled equals one and shift this time equals vacation. Okay, so we're looking for the people on day 15 who are on vacation. So when we look at this list here, we have day 15, here are the workers who are on vacation that day. So this allows you then to check any particular day, any particular shift, you can see who's on and who's off. Now. Here's a question for you. Can we rerun this with 10 employees? Is it possible to only have 10 employees? So if we went back and we changed this to 10 and we run this, all the constraints here, same number of minimum employees, three and five, We're going to populate the schedule and the worker, run this, okay, and then give us our schedule complete. Notice when we output this information, I'm just going to remove the head part so we can see the whole thing. Notice when we run this, we start to see negative sixes. <laughs> So when it starts to give you, because remember, it's bound. It's supposed to only give you one or zero. Here we have a seven. Here we have a negative six. When we start to see those, and it was only supposed to give us zero or one, then it's not a solvable problem. Either we screwed up in all the constraints in the code we wrote, or there is just no solution to it. So in this case, there's so many constraints about when people can work and when people can't that you can't actually run this business with 10 employees. Not if you're going to be scheduling for 35 days um, and you're gonna have all these constraints. So there's no solution if we only have 10 employees. So look at, play with this, change, let's say the minimum number of employees who are working in morning and evening, change the number of days and number of employees, you could also change the maximum consecutive days that they can work, you know, those types of, of things here. 
Um, so just to recognize that the max consecutive days of five, um, we have it tied here because this is the two days that go with the five. So maybe don't, if you change this one, you also have to change this constraint. Uh, but you can play with it and then you can use it to schedule, right? So you set up the parameters, the limitations, and then you can use linear programming or integer programming here uh, to help you then set up your work schedule. Who should work and who should get vacations on each day and shift.